Oh my goodness, what the heck? So a few of you reached out and said that the new version of DaVinci Resolve is absolutely insane on the new M1 Mac. So here I have my base model M1 MacBook Air with only eight gigs of RAM that I have been using as my daily laptop. And today, let's see if DaVinci Resolve finally caught up to Final Cut Pro. But first, a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making your own website, Squarespace is seriously the best way to go. You can make a great looking website like we did with literally no web making experience. It doesn't matter if you want a portfolio, a blog, e-commerce, or anything else, you just choose from one of their great templates and customized blocks of text and images. It's incredibly simple, affordable, and ours have been running flawlessly for years now, bringing in a ton of traffic thanks to its built-in SEO tools. Start your free two-week trial with no credit card needed by going to squarespace.com slash maxy or by using the custom link down below. And when you're ready to launch, you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Right out of the gate, we have this new pop-up and at the top, it says Apple Silicon performance has been improved. We have a new processing engine that is up to three times faster, enabling 8K video editing and grading on an M1 chip. All right, that's we're gonna have to test that out. That is crazy. Now I have an M1 MacBook Air right here. This is the base model, eight gigabytes of RAM. So this is gonna be a tough test. But man, you can pick up one of these for 850 bucks and it is the best laptop you can get for the money by far. And you can actually do editing. This has been my main rig for months now. Leaving my 16 inch, I've been using Final Cut because obviously that works extremely well. And you guys saw in a previous video, I tested out the new version of Premiere Pro and that was a big disappointment. But now we will see if DaVinci Resolve is as good or maybe even better than Final Cut. That would be amazing. All right, so let's see what else we have. Uh, new effects, we have accelerated AVC intra playback on M1 Max. Okay, we'll check that out. Let's start out with something simple. We have basic 4K footage here. I do have a couple LUTs and film grain applied. It played back perfectly before, it just took longer to export. And now looking at it, it seems like the GPU usage has gone down. We're at 53% only. And remember, this is the seven core GPU, not the eight core chip. So, okay, that's no issue. Playback is smooth. Let's go ahead and try out this export. Bam, we are off and right out of the gate, I can already see that it is gonna be significantly faster. Look at that estimated time there. And GPU usage is also lower. Before it was pretty much 100%. Now we're sitting at 69.72. So they have definitely made optimizations. All right, we are done. This is good news. <laughs> this is really good news. So previously, this took about five and a half minutes to export, which was already really fast compared to like 12 for Premiere. Um, but now this just got three minutes and nine seconds. Final Cut Pro took three minutes and six seconds. That's a difference of three seconds. That's pretty much within margin of error, but that is a massive improvement and you no longer need to use Final Cut for standard 4K editing to get the best performance, you could do just as well. That is amazing. Now, the next thing that I wanna test is stabilization. I got my stopwatch ready and let's hit stabilize. Bam, took a couple seconds there to get started, but it's not running as fast as I expected. Now, of course, with stabilization, there are differences in how detailed it's stabilizing it, but they have made some improvements here. All right, we have our results, it took 30 seconds. Previously, it took 37 seconds, and Final Cut takes nine seconds. So yes, Final Cut is still way faster, about three times faster, but as you guys have mentioned before, DaVinci Resolve does do a better job, and thankfully, it's not you know over three minutes or something like that with Premiere. Now I wanna do a super tough test that I haven't done in a while other than just recently with just Final Cut. But first, let's go ahead and export this H.265 footage. Once again, we also have similar effects. And this time, it looks like there's even less GPU usage, but let's go ahead and pound this out and see how well it does. Oh my goodness, what the heck? All right, this doesn't make sense. Is this what they're talking about with that new decoding for the M1 chip? Uh, I'm not really sure. I, mean, I thought that was for like R5 footage and optimization for you know the 10-bit 422 HEVC, but this is flying. All right, guys, it is finished, and I have never seen a five-minute project 
with effects get encoded this fast, let alone in this codec, which is even in general. Um, in Final Cut, it took two minutes and 25 seconds, which was already insane for a laptop like this. That even beat out my Mac Pro that cost, you guys know how much, and that was insanely fast. Wow, okay, so that took two minutes and 25 seconds, and this base MacBook Air with a seven core GPU, eight gigs of RAM, and this new DaVinci Resolve just did it in a minute and 23 seconds for a five minute project with effects and a base MacBook Air. That is crazy. And I, I double checked to make sure it's 4K, it's five minutes long. It, this is legitimately how fast DaVinci Resolve is now going. So for those of you guys out there, if you're exporting to H.264, it's way faster now than before, but switch. Change that up, YouTube, everybody accepts it now, YouTube, Facebook, wherever, you're literally gonna save yourself more than half the time and file space, or you'll get better quality, um, and it's gonna export twice as fast, and compared to before, like three, four times faster. So they're right, it is three times faster. Wow, okay, so now that we have that finished, let's do that crazy test. This is four 4K files oversampled into a 4K timeline. All of them have two LUTs applied. We have film grain, two of them are reversed. I stopped doing this test because it was way too hard. So let's play it back. We are getting some choppiness. All right, you guys see that? The graphics card is maxed out pretty much, which it makes sense. This is a ton of work to do. It's a short project, but let's export this. Wow, it is flying through this export. All right guys, that took one minute and 12 seconds to render. That is the same exact time as Final Cut Pro. So in this crazy tough test, the performance is identical. DaVinci Resolve is now matching the efficiency of Final Cut on this machine that Apple's been developing for years and have had access to, and DaVinci has caught up. That is amazing. Taking this a step further, we have 4.5K Red Raw. Let's hit playback. And look at that. It is playing back absolutely perfect. And it does not play back absolutely perfect in Final Cut. You know, it plays good, but there's still a little bit of drop frames. That looks great. Let's go into the color tab here. Let's hit play. And I do have a lot, I believe, on there. Yep, I have a LUT and I have film grain that's covering that up. But let's make sure that it's playing back perfect. Yeah, look at that. We're getting a perfect 23.97 playback with some overhead left over on the graphics. Wow, okay. Let's go ahead and test this out. All right, we have our results. Once again, this is really good. <laughs> 14 minutes and 47 seconds for a five minute uh, red raw clip. And that's pretty much the same as Final Cut Pro on the M1 Air with the weaker graphics, which does take a hit uh, for it. So that is incredible performance for a thin laptop like this. And it does actually play back smoother in DaVinci Resolve. All right, this is the last test that I wanna do. I don't think it could do this. Uh, it just would not make sense to maybe an M1 like the the Pro or the Mini that has better cooling and extra graphics chip, uh, 16 gigs of RAM. But seeing that playback for the 4.5K RAW, I want to throw 8K at it. As you guys could see, this is a sample clip from on online. I do have film grain applied. I have uh, at least one or two LUTs applied. You guys see that footage right there. Let's hit the space bar. Yep, we see that stuttering. CPU's maxed out, graphics is almost maxed out. This is just crazy. How about we drop this down to a 4K timeline? That was 8K in an 8K timeline. Let's drop that down. But I mean, I think it's just gonna be overloaded still. Yep, you guys can see that. Let's go to quarter res, a little bit better there. Yeah, look at that. CPU is still pretty much pinned, uh, but I think it got some of the data when it's pulling it. Now it's playing it back smoother. Um, yeah, so definitely possible if you're gonna be messing with it, but that is just incredible in a laptop. You know, before you, even if you had a $4,000 laptop, you wouldn't wanna be doing this. You have to make proxies. Um, wow. So 
there's more testing to be done. Maybe I need to do a follow-up a review of Apple's M1 lineup with the latest updates with the software, what they're capable of, what they're not. Let me know if you guys want to see that. But wow, DaVinci Resolve, we started out being the slowest years ago. You had to have crazy hardware, crazy graphics cards, slowly got better, and look what we have now, at least on M1s. It is performing just as good as Final Cut, if not a little bit better in certain things. That is insane. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, if you need a website, if you have an old website, you want to update it, check out Squarespace. You don't need a credit card. Go mess around. They have been amazing. I've been recommending them for, I think, over five years now before they even sponsored the channel. And let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. This is Max, and I'll see you in the next video.